Alright guys and welcome back to Armored Warfare and today we're going to be taking a look at the AFV class in Armored Warfare. These little buggers, as you may have known, can cause absolute mayhem very, very quickly. But you've got to play them correctly and you've got to play them well to be able to do that sort of mayhem that you want. Don't drive out into the middle of the base where it is on this map, Ghost Field, where I'm going to show you a nice, nice little niche. A little spotting position that will be very helpful for you guys in your AFEs. But don't go rushing out into the airfield and get yourself killed. It doesn't help anyone. It wastes an AFE. The AFV is probably the most dangerous class end game. All the vehicles, MBTs, light tanks, when they're all damaged, if you've been conserving your HP, being stealthy, spotting and that for your, for your team. But when they're all when they're all damaged and they're struggling to fight other MBTs, pop up behind them with whatever weaponry your AFV comes with and completely annihilate them. So the weaponry on my vehicle that I've got today, the BMP3, it has 130mm and one 100mm gun. The 100mm acts as an AT gem launcher as well, and the AT gems are very effective. And I'll show you me using them right now from our little spot here. The spot also allows us to spot right across on the enemy flank there when they're trying to cross onto our corner. Fire an AT gem preemptively, but he stops, damn it. So the 100mm also fires HE frag. This is quite useful against large vehicles. I'll go more into detail on shell types in a later video. But the HE frag is useful for heavily armoured vehicles due to it being a, a HE round, of course. The 30mm autocannon is very effective against medium to lightly armoured vehicles. It does tear them apart, doing about 80 to 70 damage per hit with 120 penetration. 80 gems, of course, have about 600 damage and 700 pen. Easily enough to go through the side of an MBT-70, doing 544 damage and tracking him. Keeping these guys spotted for our team, because we are the main spotter. But from this position as well, an AFV, when it's stationary, gets a spotting bonus. The BMPs, I think, get a 20 meter spotting bonus, but have a reduced base capture speed, unlike the BMD, where it's vice versa. They get a shorter spotting distance, but higher. No, they get a... BMDs get a, uh, a longer spotting distance, but a shorter or a smaller base capture rate. That's the one. I can't remember which way around it goes half the time. Just sitting here putting 80 gems into the side of T-72s. Easy enough. We've already got 1,740 damage. Just sitting here, spotting them, 80 gem in. What that much spotting damage will do by the end of it. From this good spot here. Keeping them at bay, our guys on the corner are still... They're doing fine up there. T-72 Euro. Yep. I could designate him if I wanted to. I could have designated the MBT-70. The designation tool is the AFV ability, such as the light tanks get the speed boost and the tank destroyers get the camera rating one now, which has been changed from the sniper bonus. The designator allows you to do a 2-3 to three second designation on an enemy vehicle. This will last about 20 seconds. Now, what this does is it makes it very, very difficult for the enemy vehicle to become unspotted. They need to lose line of sight and sit back out of sight for quite a while will put them out of action quite quickly and if they do stay in action if a friendly vehicle penetrates them it will do full damage there's an incredibly high chance that it will do a lot of damage to them if not more which is very useful against the large troublemakers of the team such as this bradley here rushes out i can't do anything against him he's now been designated as you can see from the arrow and the half rectangle. And look how much damage is going into him. Put an 80 gem. APS stops it though. And he gets completely and utterly destroyed by all the friendlies that are shooting at him. Because he's designated. So designating is quite useful for the team. Doing a lot of damage to a friendly or an enemy vehicle very, very quickly. Also another thing that I, I didn't know about AFVs until I was talking uh, and Sidian sent me a little sheet. Is that AFVs actually become unspotted very quickly. Compared to, say, that Stingray over there, or an MBT, when you get spotted, you come out of line of sight, and you have to sit back for about five seconds or more to become unspotted. AFVs, on the other hand, as soon as line of sight is cut on the AFV, they become unspotted. Now, that is very, very useful, and I didn't know that until I was reading the sheet they sent me, which, is, which can be played quite an advantage, of course. So, as soon as you become unspotted... Boom, you pop out again, and they're just like, whoa. Then you lose line of sight, become unspotted again. Now we're going to go from our spotting that we did on that little hill there, firing 80 gems. We're going to load in the 30 mil and go for a little bit of brawling. So that, that T-72 there, we played with the Bradley. He was focusing on the Bradley. We come round behind. Engine deck, side shot straight into him. Come round. There's the ERC. 
very weak vehicle. We'll just aim up some of our shots. We're at a decent enough range that we can keep him spotted. He can't see us through that bush there. And we just completely and utterly destroy him. So for the spotting stuff, if you want to know when you're going to be spotted, at the bottom there's a little yellow tank with a white bar under it. I think what that represents is when they've got a line of sight on you, and you, that bar isn't on red, you can fire quite happily in, in the white. As soon as that goes red, you'll become spotted. That's your firing indicator. Now, the white bars around the vehicle do indicate your like foliage and hills around you, which will help you be unspotted. Centuro, easily destroyed. So, keep in bear in mind the spotting mechanics at the bottom there for your AFV, so you know where your cover is, how well you're firing. Don't let that drop into the red, or you might become spotted. Here he is. That Centauro as well is about to complain about era armor on this thing. He's like, what? AP doesn't get stopped by era. Yes, it does. The uh, Usually era does add a multiplier to your AP. Mostly to shape, charge, and HE, but it does add it to AP. So the era armor on the BMP is quite effective. It's very useful for the brawling because era, of course, stops shape charge, which a lot of people fire shape charge at AFVs simply because they're very weak, very easy to kill, and will do a lot of damage to them very quickly. Well, we're going to have to go hunting a VBL now. Another VBL, a little four-wheel car thing with a 20mm autocannon. Where is he? We should be able to make short work of him, of course. With our 30mm is far superior to his little gun. Where is he? There he is. Aim up. He's, he doesn't know where we are right now. He's trying to turn his gun. 27 rounds in the clip, and we can just sit here and pummel him. Take him out like that. Three kills, 4,683 damage. Quite good, I do say. So AFVs, let's recap them. So they're very stealthy, very mobile, and very maneuverable. So you've got to use those to your advantage to survive. If you look at your AFV and you see, oh, right, I can brawl. And if you've seen people like use that vehicle brawling quite a lot, or you've seen videos of it brawling, you might be inclined to take it for a little brawl, see if you can do well in it. But always, play, always try to conserve your HP in an AFV. Because late game, when there's vehicles needing mopping up, such as that VBL or that MBT-70 or the ERC, you can easily pop up on them with quite a bit of HP and armor still from your era package, if your vehicle so gets it. And you can deal a lot of damage to them and soak up all that damage that you need to do and finish it all off. So we did 4,683 damage, 1,300 spot damage, 8 vehicles spotted, gold medal and recon. Right then, so we got top kills, top assists, top damage, top spots, top crit, and top reputation. So when you play your AFV correctly and you take on board the tips that people give you, such as this video, you might be inclined to play AFVs a bit more. They are very, very good fun machines to play and highly, highly effective when you get to use to them. I still am not very good in them. I've seen people do way better than myself. So guys... Thank you for watching this tips and tricks video. I hope it's helped you improve your AFV gameplay slightly. I hope I've given you some tips you might not have known before. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.